going to do the... Coming up this week, we're going to take it back to the 1970s with this one. We're going to take out this beautiful 1970 Camaro, take it around these Georgia roads and wake up a few folks. This is early morning, this Sunday morning, beautiful 4th of July weekend. That's what we got coming up. I'm Jay Walker. You're watching Life Off Road right here on Jet Up Motorsports. To another episode of Life Off Road. In this week's feature, we're going to take it back to the past, our throwback edition. We have some of the new school mixed in with some of the old. We got a pair of beautiful Camaros here. And today it's all about this classic beauty right here. We're going to take it back to the year 1970, and we're going to take out this beautiful red Camaro with the white painted stripes on it, the racing stripes on it. And I want to bring in the owner of the car and talk more about it because I'm sure he's got quite a story to tell about it. So uh, let's bring him on in. Marty, uh, Mr. Marty, come on in. How's it going? Doing good, man. All right. Thank you for having me. No, no problem. Welcome in, welcome in. I appreciate you coming on. For everybody, this is uh, Kyle's dad, one of my camera guys, and uh, he has been telling me ever since I first met Kyle, he told me about this car and he showed me pictures of it. I was like, hey, man, you got to get me to come on. Get your dad to come on and do the show. So tell us what we have here. This is a beautiful car. Um, 1970 uh, Camaro uh, SS. Pretty much uh, all original except for, well, I should say it's all original sheet metal. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> my wife wanted a, uh, she wanted a, 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 a new car. Mm -hmm. Back then we didn't have any credit to buy a new car. Mm -hmm. I had a 70 Camaro RS. Mm -hmm. um, she wanted a Mustang. Mm -hmm. I talked her into this. Uh, we picked it up for $800. It needed everything. Uh, but at the time, we could buy everything from GM. So mm -hmm. everything you see is all GM, brand new sheet metal back in the day. Wow. So, yeah. Uh, it was a uh, labor of love, to say the least. She drove it for two years as a daily driver. Oh, nice. Okay. And she got scared one day and decided that. She didn't want to do that anymore, so she parked it, and uh, it's kind of been an uh, ongoing project since then. Nice, um, nice. Been to a lot of car shows. We've enjoyed it, traveled with it. Mm -hmm. um, it's meant for the road, not a race car, yeah. but she'll get out of her own way. Just a nice street ride, good daily driver, yeah. But how long have you had the car now? Uh, we purchased it in 1990. 1990, okay. Finished it in 93, first time. Okay. Second time I went back into the shop. Uh, Spent about six months on redoing everything, mm -hmm. and uh, pretty much untouched since then. We've added a few modifications here and there, but pretty much the way you see it, as it was completed in 1995. Okay. So 1990, yes. Yeah, so Y'all have had this car for for quite a bit. So uh, the wife, you said the wife used to drive it, and then all of a sudden she just got got afraid of it. Let me ask you one thing: What, what color was the car originally when y'all when y'all had it? When we got it, it was uh, it was a GM. Uh, I will call it a medium blue. Okay. Um, but she wanted uh, a blue to begin with. Okay. Which I'm very, I, my favorite color out of all the colors, if you, there ever was one back in the 60s, mm -hmm. was the ultramarine blue. Okay. That's what my GTO was painted. Got to thinking about it and we started tossing around more ideas and we came up with this red. And how we came up with this red was kind of interesting because we had an NSX dealership. Okay. Not too far from the house down in Florida. Right. So we decided to stop in, just kind of look around. Uh huh. I said, NS, that's a Nissan, right? I mean, I'm. Uh, uh, Acura. Acura. Uh -huh. Okay. They had an Acura dealership. We decided to just go in and look around. Well, they had an NSX on the showroom floor, this color here. Okay. They had stanchions around the car, mm -hmm. but my wife decided to help herself. I told her where the color code was. She walked over, opened the door, and got the color code. And the salesman was standing there with his jaw dropped, <laughs> watching her do this. All right. And we just kind of waved as we left. Yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, it's the right choice, man, because this, this red definitely pops, folks, especially with the sun out here just hitting it. And uh, I'm assuming these are painted stripes on here? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, so there's no vinyl rubbed in on the, on the paint job. It's just all custom paint, which is beautifully done. I, I like it. Um, Let's take a look at the engine because I want to see the, the real stuff that's behind this car. 
Man. Woo. Ah. That's very nice. I don't believe that's stock, folks, but uh, <laughs> what what motor originally came in, in this car? It had a 307. 307, okay. Mm -hmm. So back then, that was probably pumping out horsepower range, maybe. About 150. 100, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Conservatively. And what is it now? Is that a 327, 350 block? It's actually a 70 LT1. Uh, originally, it came LT1s came 370 horse. Mm -hmm. We detuned it because of the fact that we were going to drive it. Mm -hmm. So it runs about 350 horse. Oh, okay. Okay. Not as big of a cam, not as big as a car. It was yeah. made for, you know, daily driving. Nice, nice, nice. Man, that's a, I'm sure this thing has won <laughs> a ton of awards. Y'all look underneath this engine bay, folks. I mean, just the attention to detail. I mean, it's, you won't see anything prettier than that. I mean, that's just outstanding. Just outstanding work, man. So I'm sure you probably, how many car shows have you, you won in this thing? Um, We estimated right about 140. Okay. We used to do a car show every weekend for five years. Six about years. five years, yeah. okay. And you said this was featured in the, uh, a magazine? Yes, Super Chevy. Okay. Man, so I'm sure, I'm pretty sure, you know, I collected magazines way back in the day. My son could tell you I have a whole crate just full of, if it had a Camaro, any type of muscle car on it, new or old, I had it. And I'm pretty sure I might actually have that edition, so I would definitely uh, be looking for it. But, I mean, I can tell just by attention to detail, just how this thing looks just inside out. I mean, it's just immaculate condition, so... That's what my wife insisted on if we were going to show it, because uh, we were told by an old school car show promoter who used to do the 50s and the 60s car shows for the big time world wheels and all that. He says, cleanliness is the, your biggest, is going to be your biggest bonus points. It doesn't matter if you got a lot of chrome, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if the paint is not perfect. He said, but if it's clean, right. as long as it's clean. So we kept that in mind. And my wife took it to heart. Right. So this car, every time it went out, um, spotless when you know when we tried to get it spotless before we left, and if it wasn't, we got it spotless while it was there, and it was because of her handiwork. Okay. She was very good at what she does. Nice, so. nice, nice. Well, uh, can we take it for a ride? Sure. I would love to just take this thing out and go for a ride in it. So it's uh, not 500 horsepower, but <laughs> you know, 350. These right. type, of, I just want to just ride windows down, arm hanging out. I just want to just hear it breathe, man. I just a oh. car like this, you just want to just. This is strictly a cruiser, you know. So let's go cruising. Let's sure. go for a ride. All right, here we go. 1970 Camaro, folks, and this is a treat. I am. Grinning ear to ear. You just don't know how excited I am. This started the second generation, 1970. The Camaros first came out in 1967. And um, they changed body styles right here in 1970 to kick off, I want to say, the Smokey and the Bandit body style, whatnot. But uh, very cool car. I love this particular model here because it still has the round tail lights in the end. So. That was always a, uh, woo, a little torque. Now, interior-wise, you y'all spent a lot with this, with the you know, aftermarket gauges and whatnot. And I'm assuming these are not the original seats that came in the car. No, these actually came out of a '79 Cobra. Okay. I worked at a Ford dealership years ago, and the owner of the dealership. What were you saying? Okay. The, he owned a Ford dealership up in Illinois, uh -huh. and he liked to drink, so he got a brand new 79 Cobra in the showroom, and decided him and his girlfriend were going to go out drinking on a Friday night. Oh, wow. And it ended up rolling it, putting it in a ditch, totally the car, brand new car. Wow. Uh, just had drive-out plates on it because he thought he was going to go for a test drive. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the only thing that was left was the two seats and he sold it to me. <laughs> 150 bucks. They're, wow. These are Recaro's. Recaro C. Since I've owned it. Well, since the factory. Mm -hmm. But stock dash. Back when you could buy the dash. Mm -hmm. I did the uh, instrument cluster because, well, 
it, they just didn't have anything that I liked, and mm -hmm. so I just made my own. Now, these come with air conditioning back in the day? Yes, it did. As a matter of fact, this does have AC. I don't have it hooked up as of yet. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things I've got to work on. Okay. But yes, they were factory AC car. This one was uh, originally a factory AC car. Okay. For but as time went through and time went by and things have changed, and just lack of me doing work to it like I should be. Uh -huh. But that's going to change hopefully here in the next year or so. I get a little bit more time and put it to where it should be. Put it to uh, back in the shape that it deserves. Yeah. Well, I would say it's, it's, it's perfect, but then, you know, us, us car guys, we know our car, we just want a little bit more, you know, stuff to detail, but this, this is amazing, man. This is, uh, this is definitely a treat. Again, this is a combination between my wife and myself. Uh -huh. My wife was very involved with this boat because it is her car, and a lot of ideas from her. So, uh, brought up to what it is now. It's very simple. I mean, we didn't go for anything major as far as horsepower. If we got plenty of horsepower to get us down the road. Yeah. Uh, comfort wise, it's not the best riding, but it's not the worst either. So, yeah. Yeah, the way this is set up, this is kind of like a, a definitely a street pro car that you can just go on a cruise or kind of a marathon just drive across country yeah and, i mean the no hot rod tours and all that which i still haven't done yet i see a lot of those guys on the road all the time when i'm working you know driving and whatnot and one of these days i i get around to doing that but this would definitely seem like the perfect car to do that in we did the 98 car tour oh wow where all did you go uh from boston massachusetts to Tampa Bay. nice that was cool. I'm sure it was. But how many cars was involved? Yes. Uh, to start out with, I think there was about 1,500 that showed up. Uh -huh. And then as we got closer and found the destination, probably about 3,000 by the time we... You have people jump they in. They jump in, jump out, right. Yeah. yeah. Man, so that, that took up a span of what, about five, six days? Or did y'all... How, how does that actually work? As far as the tour, when you drive up the tour, did y'all start in Boston or where y'all no, join? We, y'all no, join in here? We, we picked it up. No, we picked it up in. Uh, uh, I think it was Kentucky. Okay. And we didn't do the long haul. We weren't long haul. Yeah. But we had enough of it that it gave us a really good idea of uh, what it was about. And it was basically a really good shakedown run for this car. Okay. Never had a problem. Yeah. Not, didn't have any kind of issue whatsoever. Yeah. And, you know, knock wood, uh, we, we won't. So. Yeah. But no, it was built to drive. It was built to get off the road and just go. Yeah, and that's what I like about a lot of these particular cars. Even the cars today, you know, especially the, the, the muscle cars and the sports cars. You gotta drive them. I really don't like, you know, people just let them just kind of sit up and just sit. I mean, these cars are made to be driven. I mean, you can drive it daily if you wanted to, but, you know, they're, they're made to drive. You know, that's what, you know, the American muscle car is all about. You just want to cruise around. Harley Earl had an involvement with this car, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a, and I forget the guy's name, but he was a Japanese American designer, mm -hmm. engineer, and he worked for GM. Mm -hmm. What they did is that they wanted to culminate a European and an English theme to this car. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the front end, what does it remind you of? Kind of something like a uh, with the, the front splitter on the front right there, lower spoiler. The headlights, the shape of the front end. Yeah. Honestly, it looks like a mean shark coming down the road. How about an early Jaguar? Jaguar, nice, good call. Okay, it does, yeah. Rear end, okay. They wanted a European flare. Mm -hmm. give, you, give you one guess. The round tail lights. Think Italy. Ferrari. Yes, sir. Yeah. So this guy had the had enough uh, influence. 
insight, mm -hmm. and he was such a talented designer. He was involved with the Vega, uh, and it took a while to actually sell the GM on this design. There was a few changes that were made, went back and forth, I forget how many times. I've got a book somewhere at the house that gives you the, the history of this second gen. Uh -huh. But there was a lot of brain work that was done on it. Harley Earl got involved. Uh, there was another designer, I forget the guy's name, a uh, big time GM designer. It took a lot of thought for them to come up with this. They thought it was going to be a flop. Yeah. And uh, during its debut, uh, they had car number one, which still exists to this day. Uh, never been titled. Wow. Uh, there was an owner. The guy that owns it, I think, owns uh, uh, Camaro number one and Camaro number two, six and seven. Wow. I'm surprised it's not Rick Hinkton. <laughs> uh, yeah. And forget the guy's name, but it's gold. Yeah. No spoiler. Yeah. No strikes. And I think it had a, um, it was a 350 automatic. Mm. Uh, and it was, I think it was a column shift. Okay. Was this a four speed in this? No. No, this was always been an automatic. Okay. No, I mean, as far as uh, the shift wise, I mean. Oh, no, it's a, at three, it's, this is a B&M 350. Uh -huh. I built the transmission. Okay. Uh, I got the kit from B&M, uh, installed it, tuned it, and uh, no stall work. I, I was kind of against that because of the heating up. Uh huh. But it works fine with what it's got. 1500 is basically stock, 1200 is stock and stall. Uh -huh. And it works great. Right. Shifts like it like it should. Never had an issue. Yeah, it's definitely uh, it, it kind of almost reminds me of my old uh, Cutlass I had the 350 Rocket in, my '76 Cutlass uh, Ceylon I had. Love it, Cutlasses. Yeah. Big car. I mean, but you talk about a nice ride. Oh yeah. Nice yeah. ride. I missed that thing. That was uh. Juan's first car when he was a baby. Have y'all been on any uh, road trips in this or? Um, Other than been, the power tour of it. Yeah, we did the power tour. We've been to Mississippi with it where our parents lived there. Mm -hmm. uh, went to Southern Illinois, visited the fan there. Okay. Uh, just kind of drove it all over the south. Okay. You know? It's a very good ride. I mean, it. <laughs> Up what it is, yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, but it's like I said, man. All, all I need is some windows down. <laughs> listen to that engine, and I can drive this all day. I mean, well, AC would be nice to have. <laughs> yeah, it would be. But we got a, a nice, a nice good breeze. So yeah. keep the armpit cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, man, this is beautiful, man. Like I said, when Cal first showed me the uh, the pictures, I was like, oh, man, yeah, you got to let him come on, man. And I said, I would love to do that. I haven't done an old Camaro yet. The day that this car was asked to go to a magazine, was a car show down in Rosa, Florida, the mm -hmm. Super Chevy show. And uh, I don't know if you know who Clarence Clemens is. I've heard that name. Okay, yeah. Clarence Clemens was a sax play, saxophone player for uh, the E Street Band. Okay. Uh, the wife and I brought it in, parked it, cleaned it up, and we decided to go to the swap meet. So we're walking back, and we're coming up on the car, and we see this great big guy and a couple other guys following him. And I looked at my wife and I go, uh, I mean, he's leaning inside the car. He's like, he's all over like him. Right. <laughs> well, by the time we got up there, they were gone. Mm -hmm. And the couple next door were looking at us just grinning from ear to ear. Yeah. And it, uh, I asked, I said, do you know who they were? She goes, you don't know who that was? Right. I go, no. Back from a distance, she goes, that was Clarence Clemens. Wow. He was doing nothing but talking this thing up. Yeah, I thought that was something. I mean, having a celebrity. Just, yeah. And it won't best to show that night. Right here. Yeah, Oh, yeah, I mean, that was actually a treat. And uh, a little later on, he actually came over and introduced himself to us. I thought, nice. He's a, I don't know, he, Clarence Clemens was 
big, big guy. Yeah. And he can play the hell out of that thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. They got the punch like yours does, but it won't get out of its own way. Hey, man. This is fine. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's got just enough, you know. But we've, actually, we've actually we've actually took this one out. Yeah. That was all the power tour. I was racing a buddy of mine. Uh, he had a 454 SS pickup. Yeah. And he was an artist and he did some drawings. And he said, uh, he would always said it's all show and no go. And right. Like, oh, okay. And then we went on the power tour and he couldn't keep up. <laughs> he said, yeah, he goes, I dropped off at about 130. And Gil, sitting over here. Yeah. Just looking at me, hanging on to the dash, not knowing how fast we were going. Yeah. Yeah, we went to uh, a event called the Turkey Rod Run one year. Uh -huh. Well, we've been to it several times, but a buddy had, he had a 81 Z28 we just got done with. We had this. And uh, started noticing there was a man following us. Yeah. When we went, it went. I'm like, okay, so what's this guy's deal? Right. So we found a uh, drive-in. Uh, restaurant and we decided to pull in there and we pulled in side by side and we seen this van come whooping around in there inside the parking lot mm -hmm. and we're getting out steering wheel in hand and this guy jumps out of the van and goes I want to buy that car I want to <laughs> buy that car and we go which one you're right the red one <laughs> my wife goes it's not for, not sale. for sale I thought that's right yeah. I got twenty thousand dollars cash right now she goes, not for not sale. Not enough. No. <laughs> no sale, yeah. No, no this, this thing, I mean, we've had, we've turned down some very generous offers for this thing. Yeah. But where are you, what, for the price it would take to replace it? Uh-huh. You know, I just, I just, we just, and sentimental value, so. Yeah. It's like, no, well, we're, we're good. Yeah, some things just, just off the table. Exactly. You know, I mean, yeah. This is just one of those things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and, that, and that happens all the time. I remember even when I had my cutlass, you know, people always ask me all the time. And eventually I had to wind up getting rid of it because I had bought a, a newer Camaro. I bought a 98Z28, and I just kind of let the cutlass sit in my mother, mother's house and just kind of ride. And, and I had poured so much money into it, but I was constantly pouring money into it. I was just like, ah. Uh, I can't continue to just keep throwing money down the drain, you know, I'm not going to ever get it to the way I want it, so. You know, and that's where a lot of projects that I've taken where people have started on something mm -hmm. and they would bring it to me and they go, can you do anything with us? Yes, right. we can. Uh, how much do you want to, you know, how much are you wanting to spend? Right. Uh, people ought to know that it takes a a lot more to build one than right. it could be you just go out and buy one. Right. That being said, I mean, there's plenty of these cars out there, and if you have a chance and you have the money, yeah, and you want to get into something like this or you enjoy something like this, go ahead, do it. I yeah. mean, you, you, I don't think unless you get the wrong car, you're going to really, you know, really regret it. Right. I mean, I'd love to have something like what you've got, you know, 500 horsepower stock under the hood. I mean, <laughs> right. You know, that that to me is just absolutely amazing. Oh yeah, it's it's fun, man. I, I have to give you a ride and get back yeah, time. But yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun, man. And that's that's my thing, man. I just like to just some days just get in it and just just cruise around and listen to the noise. Sometimes I turn the radio off and just I just want to hear the exhaust, you know. And it's uh and I get stopped in it all the time. It's like I'm sure you get on it. I don't get a lot of sale offers, you know, people wanted to buy it, but... Well, that's going to change. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sure. But I get stopped in it all the time. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, this was an absolute blast, man. I, I, I definitely feel just honored to be able to drive a Thomas classic like this one and it doesn't get any better than this you know 1970 Camaro you know totally redone you know 
not heavily modified, but it's, it's a streetable car. It's a drivable car. So I definitely want to thank Marty again for letting me take his baby out. And uh, many, many thanks to your wife for uh, allowing us to, to give it a drive. So uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in. And remember to click that thumbs up button and subscribe button. And uh, go to my website, jdubmotorsports.com. Order you some merch. We got t-shirts, hoodies, um, keychains. Uh, order you Yeti. I told you in the last video I have my customized uh, Yetis that have, uh, you can put your name on them or whatnot with my logo. So it's pretty cool, especially on this hot 4th of July weekend. So uh, everybody be safe out there, you know, and uh, be careful. And uh, me and Marty going to keep on driving a little bit more. I do not want to get out of this car. So uh, we'll catch you next time.